Next on our list is, is a, another topic of exercise that you haven't heard about, Tai Chi, that Catherine Yu is going to present. And I'll just give a background. Tai Chi, of course, is something that sounds a little bit exotic uh, in the realm of something like yoga or other things that come from other cultures far from North America. And yet it's alive and well here. It's been part of the exercise and wellness scene. But it's input into Parkinson's disease. Uh, I became aware of it in about 19, uh, pardon me, 2012 when the most prestigious medical journal, the New England Journal of Medicine, published an article in Parkinson's disease patients showing that Tai Chi training led to enduring benefits for Parkinson's patients of balance and gait and many other things better than standard exercise. And this was even the case a month after that exercise had ended. So it got into the realm of a therapy that uh, seemed to beat out a lot of things we do with uh, the pills that we prescribe. So I'm very interested to invite uh, Catherine Yu here to tell you about her experience of working with Parkinson patients and the training that, and background that she's had in this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Lewitt and Julia for inviting me. Um, it's been a while. We've been sitting there for a long time. Would you like to stand up a little bit? Just do some stretches with me. So if you want to sit on your chair, you can still sit on the chair. But if you want to, to stand up, you can stand up. You can stand behind a table or behind a chair, just so that you can hold on if you need to. Stand with your feet about hip width apart, if you can see me. So whatever, how wide your shoulder is or how wide your hip is, you want the feet to be apart, like shoulder width. And have the toes pointing forward so that both feet are parallel with each other. You're standing here, imagine yourself as a tree, strong, but also flexible. The branches can move in the wind. The top of your crown, as if being lifted by a string from the top of a ceiling, and your tailbone, put 2,000 pounds on the tailbone, let the tailbone drop down to the earth. Bring your hand up. Let it fall through your middle. Imagine yourself on water, on a boat. Imagine yourself sitting onto a ball, into the water, and let the buoyancy of the water float you right up. Let the string from the top of the ceiling lift your head up. Bring your fingers together, let them cross. As far as your shoulder range of motion allow you to do, bring your hand up, press into the sky with the heels of the hand. Relax, drop down. One more time, come up. Feel the tailbone drop. Feel the top of the crown lifted. Imagine that the body has a wall alongside your leg. So now, Imagine you're in the ocean. The wave is coming towards you. It hits your body wall, and you're going to splash with the wave forward with one hand. Then with another hand, follow the wave. Splash. 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 Feel the body move. Splash, splash, splash. 
Let your hand come up. Imagine yourself as a crane and just let it fly. You're going to shift the weight to one leg and let go of the other heel. Then come down. And you're going to shift a little bit to the other side and let go of the other heel. Just make sure that your hip are level. We have the tendency to hike the hip like this. We try to keep the hip level on one plane, like a crane flying. Crane takes flight. If you wanted to, you can also bring your foot up and put it down. When you bring your hand up, you can bring your foot up and down. Or you can just put the heel up so that the toe is still touching the floor for balance. Bring two hands up right in front of you as if you wanted to push a fridge or push it the mountain, OK? Put one hand down. Now, we're going to shift weight to the, the downhand side. Let's say the left side. How about we bring the right hand up and the left hand down? So we're all do the, doing the same direction here. Now, we're going to just change the hand. The up hand is going to come to the middle and let it drop slide to the side, and the down hand is going to come up into this push position, and then come to the middle, drop, and slide to the side. So we, if we count the beat, it's going to be one, two, three, down. One, two, three, and down, right? OK, so now let's Bring two hands together. Let's do both hands. So we're going to shift weight a little bit. We're going to come up into here, this position here. Then we shift the weight to this side. Let the hand drop. Come up. Shift the weight. Change hand first. Shift the weight. Change hand now. Shift the weight. This is called brush knee. Let's change the base of support to one leg in the front, one leg in the back. So if you can see me, my left foot is in the, in the front, my left, right foot is in the back. My left foot is pointing toward 12 o'clock. My right foot is pointing toward an angle, about 1 o'clock. And my body weight is about 70% in the front, 30% in the back. This is called Tai Chi stance. We're going to do the same thing. So both hands up as if we're pushing a mountain. And then we bring the right hand down. We're going to just shift weight turn a little bit to the right side. And then we switch hand. We're going to turn to 12 o'clock. Turn to 1 o'clock. Turn to 12 o'clock. Turn to 1 o'clock. Turn to 12 o'clock. Nice. Now change your foot into the right foot in the front, left foot in the back, both hand up. Drop the right hand down. So now the left hand is up in this push position. We're going to turn to the left. That turning is going to bring the left hand coming, drop through the middle. The right hand is coming up. We're now facing 11 o'clock. Then we turn to face 12 o'clock, and then 11, then 12, 11, and 12. Now let's take a walk with us. How about we walk in place? 
left foot in the front, right foot in the back. Shift weight to the back leg. Turn to 11 o'clock. Go forward to 11. Forward to 11. Bring the right foot up toward 12 o'clock. Turn to 12. Sit back. Turn to 1 o'clock. Shift weight to 1 o'clock. Go forward to 1 o'clock. Step to 12 o'clock. And then turn. So now we're walking with this in place. So the same exercise is called brush knee. We can do it in so many ways. Let's start from the beginning. Let your heels touch. Make a V. Your head is suspended from the ceiling. Imagine yourself as a marionette that the string is holding your joint. You're on water. Let the buoyancy of the water support you. Shift the weight to the right. Step the left foot out. Shift the weight to the middle. Bring the foot back to shoulder width. Let the arm float up. Let the elbow sink. Drop the hand down through the water. One more time. Imagine yourself on the water, on the ball. Let the water flow the whole arm up. Slide down. Come up. Sink the weight to the left, turn. You're not going to be able to do all this. I'm going to show you. I want you to watch it if it's OK. Is that all right? OK. So um, I'll just do a few forms that we practice in class with our students. We, we did the beginning already, so let's start.
Um, so, I think you are all familiar probably with Daniel Lonely. Danny had been uh, doing Tai Chi for 20 years. He's been diagnosed with Parkinson's at age 49, and he had to quit his job as a computer engineer. And then um, after some treatment that is yielding a little relief for his symptoms, he continued to do Tai Chi. And then um, now he's a, a Tai Chi instructor teaching Parkinson's disease patient um, the program that he's been learning. And I think he did a lot of retreat and, uh, uh, in the Alaska uh, cruise, probably. What he said is, Tai Chi has saved my life. It slowed down the progression of my symptoms. And it helps me to maintain my flexibility and my stability in walking. So there are mountains of research showing us how Tai Chi is helping with Parkinson's disease. But how do it, how do it work? Why it works? So in 2012, Dr. Fu Zhongli published an article on uh, Tai Chi and postural stability in patients of uh, Parkinson's disease. It showed that after um, 24 weeks of Tai Chi training, 48 hours, the patient's uh, strength and balance, their mobility, and their cognitive function are all improved. Their fall risk was reduced by 67%. In the most recent study that is uh, supported by the Davis Finney Foundation, um, by Peter Wing from Harvard Medical School, it showed Tai Chi not only improve the motor function of PD patients, also the non-motor function regarding depression and cognitive function too. Um, their finding is that Tai Chi is uh, doing more than conventional exercises for PD patients at relieving their symptoms and improving their quality of life. Um, we have classes here in Henry Ford on Fridays. We also have classes about two minutes away from here in West Bloomfield Parks and Recreation in Drake Sports Park. I just showed you the, one of the exercises that we do um, in our classes. We did brush knee. Originally, we were doing just in a horse dance, and then we were doing weight shifting laterally to one leg and the other. And then we were doing rotational weight shifting. And then after that, I started to have you walk with this cat-like walk. I call this Tai Chi walk. You're walking like a cat, like this, okay? And then we also can practice this brush knee using the form continuously in a loop. On both sides, actually. So what do you think? Why this works? Do you, do you feel why it works with your own body? What we are doing? Well, we're using our imagination, we're using our mind. Our mind has such a vast capacity that our, we're using our mind to control our body movement. And we're always shifting our attention, multitasking at the same time. We're engaging different body, body parts at the same time. So let's do another Tai Chi move called grasp the peacock's tail. You can sit, you can stand up, and let's do this together.
One foot in the front, one foot in the back. It doesn't, be, it doesn't matter which foot. Make a ball on the right. So let's see, the left foot in the front, the right foot in the back. Make a ball on the right. Make a ball on the right. Separate the hand. Let the right hand drop down, left hand come up in front of you. Sit back, bring the ball to the left, turn the left foot out. Shift the weight forward to the left, bring the right foot up. Roll the ball from the bottom up. Turn the body a little bit, change the hand. Swim back as if you wanted to pick up a stone. Bring both hands together, pressing forward toward 12 o'clock. Separate the hand. Sink back as if the wave is coming to you. And now push with the wave. So this single Tai Chi form has that many components, okay? If we count, let's look at how many sequence of movement we have here. One, ball on the right. Two, ward off to the left. Three, ball on the left. Four, Ward off to the right. Five. Transition. Six. Roll back. Pull back. Seven. Pressing forward. Eight. Withdraw. Nine. Push. I think you all know why this works. Um, those are our classes. We, uh, on the Vita table, we have the summer brochure from West Bloomfield and also the Henry Ford Hospital, the flyers there on the table. You can take one. Feel free to join us for the summer. We only have four weeks of classes in the summer. Um, the West Bloomfield Drake Sports Park is on Wednesdays and the, West, uh, the hospital class is on Fridays. We also have uh, classes in the fall, the flyers um, are on the table too. So feel free to grab a flyer and come join us. You can always try our class for free. You don't need to register for the class. Just come here, try it for free. Um, Danny wrote a poem. Stillness is my solace, and slowness is my sanctuary. It's called Tai Chi Tears. I really like this one, where I'm quiet as a mountain, yet flowing like a river. Dr. Lewitt, can you do me a favor? Can you read this? <laughs> and okay. yeah, please. With the grace of a white crane spreading wings, I move, and with the firmness of a golden pheasant on one leg, I stand. Using the guile of a snake creeping down, I fight, and with the stealth of a tiger seeking prey, I conquer. Like a horse jumping over a stream, I soar in victory, and with the surety of a sparrow returning to its nest, in triumph, I fly. Thank you. I hope you find Tai Chi as therapeutic to me, to my students, and I hope to be part of your journey. Thank you so much.